Okay, welcome everybody uh, to this next podcast in our Mastering the Mind series. And I'm greatly honored, privileged to have um, my resident uh, special guest, Mr. Mustafa Samaz. So hello there and, and good afternoon to you, um, Mustafa. Hi, hi Sunil, hello. Thank you very much, thank you. So Mustafa will be joining us um, in this presentation. And in about 40 minutes time, um, I will open up a discussion with Mustafa for him to offer his insights. He, he is, um, you know, in his own right, he is a, a, you know, a great philosopher and thought leader and has got tremendous insights about various aspects of life. And obviously I'm approaching this as a transformational life coach, as somebody who works as a therapist within the wellness field. And so having Mustafa here is, is, is highly valuable because he'll be able to give his insights mostly from a philosophical perspective. This is really important, particularly with the topic in mind in our Mastering the Mind series, we're gonna be looking at um, ego versus intuition, okay? So this is a really, really exciting topic because I've spoken about this many a time, possibly through this, uh, through this particular series, but I know with my clients, uh, with, with lots of uh, people I work with, practitioners, friends, etc., always there seems to be a debate about, is it your ego telling you to do something or is it your intuition? And I'll be quite clear with everybody before we get into the content, is that possibly for the first 40, 45 years of my life, I let the ego do all the talking and less of the intuition. Now my intuition speaks very loudly, but the ego is still there. Now I'm trying to get a good balance with it now. And I must say, um, for me, finding the, finding the voice of the intuition has been extremely transformative for me as a human being and something on this planet. So we're going to do a deep dive into this. And uh, occasionally I may well go into a screen share but we'll see how this goes. Okay, so here we go. So intuition versus ego. So you may well have heard of these terms, you know, bandied around, thrown around in personal development. And maybe you've even heard that the ego is bad news and your intuition is what you need to be listening to if you want to live the best possible life, okay? However, we're gonna be exploring the dimensions of each one because there are pros and cons, like we discussed the other uh, podcast, we talked about irrational thinking and rational thinking and the benefits of each one and the pros and cons, etc. So the same is going to be done with this particular topic, okay? And, and also, it's also a question about, well, do you listen to your ego or your intuition? If so, how do you listen, okay? So that, there's a notion here we're talking about intuition versus ego. We, we really kind of are thinking to ourselves, okay, well, which of the voices do we need to listen to? Which voices do we need to believe? Okay, because it's, it's something that is so internal and maybe subliminal that we sometimes don't really appreciate it's actually going on, but it is going on, okay? So hopefully by the end of watching this particular podcast, you'll then be listening to your voice from the ego and the voice from your intuition and then trying to have a discussion between the two and maybe doing some negotiation as well. Okay, so what I thought I'd do first of all is let me just explain what the ego is and then what the intuition is and then we're going to try and bring the two together. Okay, now what is your ego? Your ego's main job is to basically keep you alive. That's it. Full stop period okay the ego uses physical problems as a way to decide what actions to take and those actions are always based on survival and keeping you safe so survival safeguarding you protecting you keeping you safe that is the job of the ego okay now whether that puts you in a financially favorable position or emotionally favorable position or not it doesn't make a difference its job is to keep you alive and keep you safe. So you've probably heard of the notion, flight or flight or freeze response, okay? And you know, when something particularly is life-threatening, 
Now that is the ego giving you those options for you to make those choices. And obviously it's putting those options into your conscious mind. So then you can then be protected, but it's giving you those options. Okay. So the old, the ego also comes up with anything that may be uncomfortable or unfamiliar because it doesn't really know what's going on. And that means you won't be able to take the actions that will protect you. So basically the ego makes all the decisions from fear. Okay. So when you're feeling a sense of fear, and I know lots of people have been during the pandemic, during the lockdown, etc., and that is actually a very interesting point because if we're, if we're acting from fear, if we're making decisions from fear, then could they be the right ones? Okay. It's something to, to really, to try to kind of, um, uh, reflect on. Okay. Also the ego can make you move very, very quickly. You know, sometimes when you act impulsively, you think, Oh God, I've got to do this. Otherwise I'm going to be in trouble. Otherwise this bad thing will happen. And sometimes it can it, it enables us to move quickly, which is the kind of flight um, or flight response. Okay. Even, even if the danger is a dollar bill or maybe doing um, a Facebook live or, or asking somebody out on a date again, you know, the ego, it's going to do its job and it's going to then present something to you. And it's up to you whether you freeze, fly or whether you fight. Okay. Now, it may beg the question as to whether you feel that the ego is actually a good thing or not. So the question might be, so the ego is bad. Okay. Right. And the answer is no, the ego is not bad for us. Okay. Like I said, it's there to keep us alive. And this is 100% necessary for us to live our life, for us to be alive, for us to be able to breathe, eat, uh, work, and do all the things that we need to do, okay? And the ego can also be used to help you get closer to living your best possible life because when the ego speaks, this gives you the opportunity to see where you need to improve as well as where your thoughts, beliefs, and actions differ from say your thoughts and beliefs and actions of your goals. Okay. And that's really, really important to, to take a hold of. Okay. So that's the ego. Now, as I said before, let's talk about the, uh, about intuition. So what is your intuition? Your intuition always comes from your gut feeling. Okay. Now, whether you feel it's, um, it comes from your stomach or whether it's your heart telling you, okay, then, this is, this is where the ego, uh, sorry, the, your um, intuition comes into play, okay? So your, your intuition makes decisions based on the knowledge that everything um, is, is rigged in your favor and its purpose is to make sure that you thrive, okay? That you thrive. So ego is, for, is to help you survive. Intuition is to help you thrive okay to become better to improve to enhance etc 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 now intuition is usually sent from universal intelligence or whatever you believe in okay so you know for me it's a source power it's a higher power now for me it's a combination of the power of the universe um also i'm a believer in god i, I believe god is also a firm part of my source power and so when that starts to work for me and it comes to me through a voice and sometimes my intuition comes through a voice or a whisper and I may hear someone's name, then I may get prompted, oh, I must, I must ring that person. When I do, then I find out something's going on there. So I'm so glad my intuition spoke to me. So this is something again from this universal intelligence. Now again, it depends on your beliefs about universal intelligence, whether you believe in that um, for me, I'm a firm believer in it, but it depends on your beliefs about it. And intuition is here to help guide you through life uh, in both a spiritual manner and in emotional manner too. When I talk about spirituality or following a spiritual path, it's all about your own awareness, about everything, about yourself, other people, about life. And it's also about being totally present in the present moment. For example, 
I'm now here um, presenting this topic and I'm doing it live. Well, as I'm speaking to you, I'm doing it live and, and I don't really have any inkling of what happened 10 minutes ago or half an hour ago in the past, or I'm not really concerned about what's going to happen in the future. I'm totally present. Okay. Spiritual, spirituality takes practice. Okay. Can be achieved through mindfulness and meditation, but that's a whole other podcast, but essentially your intuition uh, is here to guide you in life, both in a spiritual and in an emotional manner. Okay. And sometimes when you just know something to be true, your gut feeling, your heart, your instinct, your soul, spirit, something is telling you that this is the right decision. This is right. Or this is wrong. Then really, you know what? Well, I can only speak from my own experience. Now, now that my intuitive voice is much louder in my life now, um, I always listen to it. And then I make a decision whether I should go with it or not. Okay. So essentially the, um, the ego is part of your logical mind and your intuition is the spiritual all knowing mind. Okay. Now that's really a brief, dis uh, a brief uh, description about each one. Let's now try to bring the two together. And it begs this question, which one intuition or, or ego is actually controlling your life at the moment. Okay. So at first it can be challenging to decipher between the two because most of our lives are, we're, we're taught to use a logical part of our brains. Okay. Maybe the more the left hemisphere in terms of the logical you know, things must be based on scientific application. There must be a reason behind it. Okay. So we're going to try and find out. Um, so again, that's, that's the first thing. And also, it's also about being realistic and thinking clearly and using one's head to decide which one is it. Now, I can safely say, like I said in my introduction, I think for a large part of my life, I think I let my ego, without realizing it, without calling it ego, I let this voice control my life. I want to be safe. I want to be hugely successful. I need this. I, 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 I. So it's about I, okay, with the ego. That's how I identify with it. But now it's a case of me and also we, and we in terms of humanity, society, in terms of this universal intelligence, source power. This is how I, I try to navigate the two, okay? Now that I'm aware that there are two voices, I now listen to each of them very, very carefully. Okay, now, how can um, ego versus intuition, how, how can it really help us? Well, it can help us in the area of problem solving, okay? Now, I'm a transformational life coach, and my job is to listen to people's issues, problems, and concerns, and hopefully, possibly, offer, offer a solution or solution. Now, sometimes when I work with a client, I sometimes have to make them aware of the differences between each of them, and then to help them cite examples of how, how each of them have worked for them or maybe not have worked for them. Okay. And so essentially, um, you will see that, um, the, you know, when you, when you look at this in, in some detail, um, you'll then start to think, Oh, maybe there is something inside my mind that's speaking to me. Okay. Now, let me just give you an example of how we can use this for problem solving. Pretend for a minute that you're walking along, uh, somewhere and then you come up with a brick wall. Okay. Your brick wall is your problem. Now, your ego, your ego will see this brick wall um, and will only find excuses as to why it's there, what it means about who you are and why you can't overcome it. Now, let's say your intuition walks up to the same brick wall, okay? It still views it as a problem, but the intuition has a different perspective on the problem, okay? It'll begin to look for a simple solution to go around the, the brick wall or maybe even go through it, okay? So this, this is how the two can work. So think of it like this, your ego and your intuition are looking out of the same window, but they see two different things based on their perspective. So you can look at something, you probably heard the expression, you know, put, put this pair of spectacles on or put that, that pair of spectacles on, okay? 
And so you can view it, one spectacle for, for the ego, one for the intuition, okay? And sometimes we have to then change. And maybe, maybe being more uh, bifocal is probably the way forward. So pardon the pun there. I'm just putting a slight twist on this in terms of the actual analogy here, but it's about the interaction between the two. So if you're only looking at the problem, that's all that you're gonna see. But if you're looking at the problem as, as a path to a solution, then this is, and th this is how you know, your intuition will come into itself. And it's like, for example, interacting with lots and lots of people through social media during the lockdown period, where lots of people, they are talking with their ego voices because all they want to do is survive. And I totally, totally understand that. But what I'm doing is I'm appreciating that, respecting that, but I'm also getting people to look at the opportunities within the problem, within being in lockdown, within you know the fact that you're not possibly working fully at the moment, or you're getting back into work, or all sorts of challenges with one's business. Then it's about looking at things creative. Okay then. Fantastic. Now, also, when you look at the uh, ego versus intuition, it's also about asking questions. So another way to decipher between your ego and your intuition is which one is speaking up when you ask questions. Now, your ego will always ask questions out of fear and of a place of lack, okay? Place of, uh, place of scarcity. The intuition will always ask questions out of love and from knowing. So your intuition will always base its questions on getting an answer or a solution to the questions. Whereas your ego will ask a question to find an excuse or a reason not to do something. Because your ego is just trying to keep you safe by keeping you in a predictable situation. Now, the other dimension I want to bring here is fixed mindset and growth mindset. Reason why lots of people may be viewed as having a very, very fixed, firm view about something is because their ego is talking. They want to be in a safe place. They want to gravitate to what they feel is familiar and safe for them. Okay. However, if you are if somebody adopting a growth mindset, then they are comfortable taking some risks because they want to embrace challenges and they want to find creative solutions. They may look at other uh, people for those ideas and solutions. And so their intuitive voice is speaking more there. Okay. Now we're not saying that one is wrong and right, but, um, but again, what I want to do now is I'm going to, again, based on the question, which one is controlling your life? What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through ego first and then intuition. I'm gonna go through a series of questions that the ego will be asking, then I'm gonna go through a series of questions that the intuition will be asking. So here are the ego questions. What if I fail? Why is this happening to me? What if I get it wrong? Why is this so hard? Why is this such a big problem for me? Can you guarantee I will get results? If not, then I'm not going to do it, okay? So that, that's the ego speaking the questions. Now, listen to the intuition. What if I succeed? What is the best result that can come out of this? How am I the cause of this? How can I, excuse me, how can I find a solution to this? And what does it need from me right now? Okay? So those are the key questions. So, you know, when you are exploring your, your egoic voice and your intuitive voice, then think about, well, you know, is, 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 are there some questions being posed in your mind? And then when you listen to those questions, you'll be able to hear, ah, maybe it's my ego speaking, keeping me safe. Or my intuition, it wants me to be present and aware and think of solutions and be more on a growth mindset orientated path. Okay. So I'm just going to quickly now, before we come, before we, the next sort of 10 minutes or so, come towards the end whereby I'll be obviously asking uh, Mustafa to comment on, 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 on today's uh, theme for the podcast. So with intuition versus uh, ego, I want to go through four more differences. So first one, ego acts from scarcity. So your ego believes there is only so much to go around. And if someone else gets something, then that means that there's not enough for you. And this can manifest itself as jealousy and envy. 
okay? For, for that somebody else is having it all and you're not getting a slice of the pie or the cake, okay? And these fears can come into play a lot around money and fearing. This is why a lot of people who fear that they're not as good as their neighbors, they're, they've got to keep up with the Joneses, as a, a phrase that we always use here. Um, and oh, I, I need more money because somebody else got a better car than me. Then that makes helps you to make decisions and choices. Well, I need to buy another property and I need to invest my money in Bitcoin or whatever it might be. Okay. And this is where your ego is talking. Okay. And if we're not careful, it can sometimes act on impulse because you want it here, you want it now. That's the solution. However, when it comes to scarcity, your intuition, on the other hand, believes in abundance and knows that we live in an abundant universe, which means there's, there is only abundance, okay? That everything is here. There is lots of money in the world. If we want it, we just have to work out a suitable path to try to get it. So we're not short of money in this world, it's in abundance. But we also have abundance in love, um, in, in generosity, in charity, um, in good deeds, okay? And, and also abundance in terms of energy. If we look after ourselves physically, uh, spiritually, um, socially, etc. cetera. So, so again, scarcity is one area, okay? And also the second one is using physical reality to determine how you feel, think, and act, okay? Now your ego loves to be the world's best fortune teller because it can predict how a situation is going to go. Then it can make sure you're not in physical danger. So your ego uses your physical reality to help you to decide to do what you need to do next. So that determines how you feel about something, what you think about it, and then how you act. So. However, um, um, but your current reality was created by your past actions, thoughts, and beliefs, and emotions. However, your intuition uses a higher power, and the knowing that life is rigged in your favor to decide what actions to take, how to feel, and what to think, and what to believe. So your intuition also uses what happens in your physical reality as lessons to know. So the ego may go more in the past and the future, okay? Past lessons, future fear, okay? But your intuition is all about here and the now. What can we do about the situation now? Number three, um, sometimes in terms of keeping you in a comfort zone or a growth zone, that's the third area. So your ego loves to know what's going on and to predict how something is going to go. And it'll say, well, it's a better place for you to be in the comfort zone. And that's fine. I think all of us are probably at the start of, I, mean, I have to be totally honest with you, I think all my intuition, probably the, my intuitive voice came to a standstill when we started the lockdown and, and our prime minister said, these are the measures we're gonna take. You're all in gonna be, you're gonna be quarantined for so many weeks or months. So this, then my egoic mind said, yes, it's to keep you safe because you do not want to get this virus. So stay home, be safe, be safe, be safe. Um, but then gradually after the first week, my intuition, my intuitive voice came back and saying, but look at the opportunities now, you know, you're more home based. You can focus on this, on that, that you didn't have time to do before because you're always out and about doing your other work. So again, and again, um, you know, your, um, your ego will also tell you about the threats. But if you do this, suddenly a, or demand a SWOT analysis. Look at the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. Do that SWOT analysis now, and then hopefully you'll make the right decision. So all these things will come from your ego, okay? And also, uh, but, but when you're acting with your, from your intu intuitive side, um, and you get them nudges, it can feel easier, scary, because your intuition knows that everything will work out. So for people who listen to their intuitive voice, they will use faith. They will have a belief that it's going to be okay in the end. Everything will pan out. Everything will just find its way. It'll figure itself out. So have faith and belief in that. And this is where your intuitive voice will start. But let the e if somebody is not believing in that, then they'll go to a place of safety and the ego will speak. Okay. 
And, and the next one uh, is number four is feelings coming from external things. So I'm sure you've heard of the saying, if you weren't happy without it, then you won't be happy with it. Okay. So happiness does not come from something outside yourself. Um, thought. It comes from your ego because your ego wants to control everything based on past beliefs. So as long as everything ticks the boxes of your beliefs about the past, the ego is very, very, very happy. Okay. But however, your intuition knows that your happiness is created from within, not external. Like, you know, ego will say, oh, you get a house, go on holiday, meet this person, do that, do that earn X amount of money, and then you'll be really happy. But your intuition is saying, no, happiness does not start from outside. It starts from within. If you're not happy with yourself, you don't keep your own glass full, then it's not going to happen. So it's not determined by anything else or anyone else. Your intuition starts from here, from within. So when I work with clients and they want to um, increase the volume and the content from their intuitive voice, then we normally use things like uh, being still, being mindful, and using meditation. And in some cases, hypnotherapy to try to get people to get their intuitive voice to speak more and to provide more suggestions on how, on how the unconscious part of the mind can then start to help influence the change of attitude and behaviors, but then that to come more into the conscious mind. And what it is about intuition, I know it might be easier said than done, but if some of you feel that having listening to this particular presentation, that you need to be thinking more about which voices are operating within your mind. Is it more your ego? Or do you think that you need to let your intuitive voice shine, which I have to say I have been doing regularly in the last five years, and it, and it really does make a big difference to my well-being and my wellness and my, and my happiness levels, and feelings of joy and bliss and, and abundance, okay? Um, and I, for me, you know, if you want to listen to your intuition, it takes practice. It takes, you can't just do it from nothing. Okay. Particularly if you, if your egoic voice has been talking, doing all the talking for you, giving you all the ideas and asking all the questions. Okay. So awareness is really a practice. If you're not fully aware and you're not aligned to that higher force, then it takes time, it takes practice, it takes focus and dedication. And for me, I've managed to achieve that way of being. I mean, I'm nowhere near, I would say, my, my, you know, my supreme higher self. We're all, you know, when you're in that state, you're working towards, definit to, towards divinity, and that's the path that I'm on. I'm on a divine path now. Um, for me to continually being aware, I have to keep working on it every single day, moment by moment by moment. When I do that, every single moment of my life, my intuition always speaks and it just calms the ego. But my ego will step in whenever I need. If I'm getting, because obviously I have to interact with the external world to survive with external people. And this is where my combination of my ego will come in, my egoic voice and my intuition will also speak to me as well. So remember this guys, be aware there are two different voices trying to nudge you in two different directions. Be aware of them. Remember, your ego comes from fear and lack and your intuition comes from a place of love, knowing, awareness to help you move in the right direction. Okay then, right. Now at this point, Mustafa, I'm going to clue there. Thank you for listening so patiently. So we've got, we've got a bit of time to have a little, to have a, uh, a discussion about the insights that I've raised in today's podcast. So um, Mustafa, the floor is yours. Sunil, thank you. Uh, that is quite illuminating and uh, such difficult, if I may say, uh, terminology, and it is um, intangible and you are doing your best to make them look tangible and uh, help your uh, audience to uh, to see uh, to sort of arm the audience with uh, with the knowledge that you have 
and you are trying to pass. Mm. Uh, it is uh, obviously um, if we solve the mystery mysteries of uh, humans, then we solve everything. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, so it is. Um, we need to sort of uh, uh, absorb the uh, information and contemplate ourselves and uh, basically divide them in, uh, in fact in four sections implication for practicality and implication for uh, theoretically you know what we know and how it manifests in in, in uh, actions uh, yeah. obviously um, ego is not a, 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 a is a villain, but uh, he is not on his own, or she is not on his own. If he, if accomplices. He can accomplices. Sort of give ego a kind of uh, a, a sexual uh, uh, identity. Mm -hmm. uh, ego has other other uh, sidekicks that is uh, um, sort of uh, uh, nudging. Uh, one is experience. Mm -hmm. uh, our own our, our our own experience, which is in our unconscious. Sometimes we tap into, sometimes we don't. And when we tap into the unconscious, we don't really uh, turn it into conscious, but we just uh, sort of uh, see what we can get out of it. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The role of uh, the uh, um, it is the irrationality that that that. Uh, uh, that sort of uh, uh, whips the ego, mm -hmm. uh, and when when uh, when this is happening, then uh, rational side says, "Hold on a minute. Have you got a ticket? Have you paid for it?" Mm -hmm. A kind of uh, exclamation mark it brings, so that you know you understand the full cost of it. Mm -hmm. uh, sort of uh, in an abrupt manner, manner, what you are doing is is not going to uh, uh, benefit you in the long run. <clears throat> or in the short run. Yeah. I would think, I would like to, uh, I'd like to invite you to another uh, session doing the uh, exact talk, but with some details. Mm. I think, I think you, you have uh, uncovered uh, uh, a lot um, with, with, one uh, one more session on this will really combine it and um, we can give work it. on that. We can. I mean, we can yeah. uh, after this podcast finishes, we can uh, talk about further content in another segment. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because it is not on its own. I mean, the time uh, doesn't allow us to to go into details. No. Uh, but uh, true. But, but so far, it is fantastic that you you. Uh, underline the link between uh, ego and um, intuition yeah because it, it is important we, we need to understand those elements in us uh, while they create a problem yeah. for us yeah they are also there to solve the problem definitely it is, yes it, it is for us to sort of uh, mm. pull the strings this yeah. way mm. kind of thing we can we can look, um, we can look I can't. at a scenario where maybe we can look at a scenario where this is what the ego would say in this situation, what the intuition, and maybe a, a scenario that a lot of people will identify with. Maybe. Uh, yes, uh, I think when we finish our uh, session, uh, we in private we talk, uh, yeah, and we uh, we can sort of uh, come up with ideas so that. Uh, uh, in another podcast, uh, the audience can uh, appreciate your efforts. No, no, well, and yours as well. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Thank you so much indeed, uh, Mustafa. Do you think that um, the distinction between ego and intuition, do you think it, if, if we had a better understanding of the differences, can it actually help people to, to prepare themselves for life beyond the lockdown? Because we're working gradually towards a, a life now where we're coming with the restrictions are being eased. But do you think that now is the time for people to start listening to one or both of their voice, to be more conscious of their voices as we're coming out of this? Because for me personally, I... my ego spoke so loudly in the first week 
that it just completely overpowered my intuition. Then my intuition kicked in after the second or third week. This is such a wide area. Yeah. What we need to understand is also uh, uh, other industries. Mm. What I mean by other in industries is cultures. Mm. Yeah. Cultural systems. Okay. Now, I can quickly, may I quickly add yeah, two yeah, things? Yeah, yeah, carry on. Yeah. Now, now the, the world has changed after the 15th century, after the Renaissance and Industrial Revolutions. Cultures before, what we can call them as, uh, as uh, organic uh, uh, ethnographic uh, segments in various parts of the world, uh, have, have changed. Now we have uh, brought the two types of culture, capitalist culture mm -hmm. and nomadic culture mm -hmm. or, or authentic cultures. Mm -hmm. uh, now each one, each one conditions humans in a different way. Uh, and within cultures, uh, within the same culture, there are also uh, various uh, um, segments as well. You know, I mean, uh, it's controversial if I if I start talking about uh, uh, social uh, segment and so on. But I, I don't want to talk about this. Uh, I, it is culture that uh, uh, that characterizes our our uh, personality, our ability, our perception and understanding of uh, external world. Mm. So in each culture, in, uh, intuition uh, and and ego forms uh, in a different ways. In some yeah. cultures, yeah. there's collective thinking. Like where I come from, uh, I was born in a village, and it was, uh, I mean, I can clearly see the difference uh, between my way of, my of way of life in London and how it was in my village, in my teens. Uh -huh. So in, 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 in distinguishing between ego and in, in, intuition, we need to go into culture. That is going to open another another uh, That's platform. That's a podcast in itself. <laughs> That's a huge yeah, yeah. consideration. Yeah. That's huge. Yes. I can. But it I, is. Yeah. Uh, definitely. Mm. Sorry. But it you? is uh, this. If 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 there, if we can connect uh, uh, contextualize. The, um, the and this um, intangible concepts uh, in cultures, then uh, pull them towards uh, uh, <clears throat> in their individual uh, sections. Then we will have a better understanding. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> because in, in a collective culture, then in uh, individual cultures. Uh, I mean, capitalism is an individualistic. Uh, uh, preaching place. Uh, so your uh, uh, ego will perform and shaped up uh, different by forces uh, uh, in capitalist culture uh, when you compare it with the uh, I mean, nomadic culture, let's say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, therefore, therefore, there is there are uh, many, many aspects, contextual aspects to think about it, mm -hmm. to think about how it, it is uh, conditioning you, in, uh, goading you towards your goals and achievements that you, uh, you want to achieve, the uh, stuff you want to achieve. Okay, nice. uh, well, again, you know, it, is, uh, it can be done uh, step by step, and I, I'm sure uh, uh, your audience will massively appreciate uh, what you are providing. So, that's such a powerful thought when you added the cultural dimension because yes there are there are cultures that will be kind of um operating on, in certain dimensions whether it's based on ego or whether it's based on intuition and you know whether you know and again the way that society is run and developed again they could heavily influence how people uh think what they what they believe in because we are living in yes. society. We, there is also people may say well 
for me, culture is very intuitive. It's what I believe, it's who I am. It's part of my identity. So it it's also begs the question, if I could pivot this slice, slice, slightly and say that maybe if, for example, in one culture, there's probably, there's too much ego happening, maybe we need to draw on other cultures which rely on more intuitive ways of thinking, intuitive ways of being. So this is where cross-cultural comparisons could be of benefit. And I do know that, as they say, um, tra well, you, know, you, you must have heard travel broadens the horizons. And you have to question, well, what are the horizons? Is it one's, is it one's way of thinking, one's way of believing, how we internalise our belief systems? Is it because of what we've been exposed to? And maybe, you know, and I have to say for me, time, you know, the more, more I live my life on this earth, the more I, I, I advance in age and years, that gives me more of a scope to be able to look at things very broadly and not just in a, because I'm learning a lot, I'm experiencing more. So time is, is another dimension as well. But yes, the culture, that must offer sounds like a whole yeah. podcast all by in its own right. <laughs> yeah. If I may add one more thing, if I may add please one, yes. one more thing. Yes, 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 yes. Every culture produces a hero journey. Yeah. Oh. Now that is another podcast all by itself. <laughs> yes, wait a minute, wait, wait a And every, every culture conditions heroes root. And uh, so when when you when you bring this into uh, a, a human ego, or when yeah. you take human ego in that mm. in, in uh, hero's um, journey and yes. and in, intuition, then you will get a, a, a new perspective. I uh, I can from my own example, I can say that I am. Uh, happy that I know uh, subjects in social anthropology yeah. uh, and I can relate them to my uh, late teens and early 20s mm. because that in, that, in those years I was the most volatile yeah. absolutely volatile yeah. Yeah. and yeah. I, I had a fight uh, while I was working on ships I, mm. the captain chucked me out of the uh, ship uh, I can't never imagine you'd be in that situation yeah. the way I know you yeah. now, but yeah. <laughs> but that was a different time. But but, but I can I can see I can see all now in in hero's journey. Yeah yeah. yeah 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 yeah. That is now, a uh, yeah. I mean the hero's journey. That's a whole podcast. I'm so glad you've mentioned that because because I've been on my own hero's journey. I still am. And I think once, I think we'll definitely do a podcast on this because once we share it with the wider public, they'll also begin to see that they are also on their own hero's journey. And it depends on which part of the journey that they're actually on. Um, so that's definitely going to be a, a, a theme for a podcast. So before we close out the segment for today, Mustafa, do you have any final thoughts that you'd like to share with the audience? Yes, uh, if I may, uh, yeah, I I would like to invite uh, the audience to uh, uh, to spend a little time to understand and to read about how cultures work. Yeah, uh, and the role of ego and intuition within that. Uh, yes, there is. Uh, I mean, today in in postmodern era, cultures are also co uh, also defined as uh, industries. Mm. It is it is, it is really uh, quite a uh, uh, quite a thing uh, uh, because uh, I don't want to go into the details, but we we again we talk about it. Yeah. If if uh, if the audience yeah if, if the audience uh, relate uh, ego and intuition yeah. to cultural values uh -huh. that they are uh, growing up or or living then yeah. that will that will be helpful. I have to be, I have to just say one final point before we finish. You mentioned about 
industries coming from culture. I can think of weddings. Sometimes the, the bigger and bolder a wedding, then that can be a reflection uh, of one's culture. Okay, can I? Because of the ego as well. I, 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 I can be quite sarcastic here. I, I just say this. <laughs> If, Maybe if, I was being if, sarcastic there as well. Yeah. If 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 when when yeah when the when the Frankfurt School of English uh, so, sorry Frankfurt School in Germany uh, um, Adorno said um, cultures are industries. What he meant was this: if you you say think like a Japanese or think like Indian, think like Tur a Turk or Arab or, or, or Russian, uh, what it means is there are certain elements in your thought that you think like uh, the, the respective cultures. So it is like, uh, imagine um, a, sausage, a sausage factory producing a range of sausages, but those sausages are uh, labeled differently because they have a different uh, level of spice in them, amount of spice. Mm. So, we are, we are uh, uh, coming from factories where our thoughts are uh, manufactured. In other words, our cultures manufacture this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's where our, our ego and uh, the rest of things are shaped up. Fascinating. I'm so, I'm so glad we've opened up um, the discussion really on ego intuition to other areas because there's... It's going to give such rich content for future podcasts that we're going to be doing together, Mustafa. So thank you so much indeed. So thank you, everybody. Please do leave your comments in the comment box. So until next time, take care and bless.